So to finish this thought, we might ask ourselves, all right, so 2 wasn't an accumulation point. 5 was an accumulation point. What are all of the possible accumulation points for this set? If 5 works, what else also works for that reason? If I take this little stick figure, if I situate the stick figure up at 5, yes, I can reach infinitely many points of this set no matter how short my arms happen to be. What other points will satisfy that definition? What was your hypothesis? Um, any points between 4 and 6 and only Any points between 4 and 6 are going to be able to satisfy that definition. So if I'm standing at, let's say, 5.9 or something like that, then any amount that I reach out my arms, I'm going to be able to still reach infinitely many points of the set. So 5.9 is accumulation point. Uh, 5.99 is an accumulation point. 4.001 is an accumulation point. Um, so I think we can convince ourselves that certainly the entire open interval from 4 to 6 uh, consists all of accumulation points of E. But in fact, we can go one step further than that. If we look back in the definition, in the definition of accumulation point, E is a set of numbers, and X is a real number. So notice what we're not saying here. We're not saying that x has to be an element of e. Not every accumulation point of a set needs to belong to the set. So we can ask the same question, can we reach infinitely many points of e within any arm's length? We can ask that same question not just about the real numbers which belong to e, but also the real numbers that don't, like 3, for example. If I stand at 3, can I reach infinitely many points of E within my arm's reach? At three? No, not if my arms are short enough, right? If, if I stand at three and my arms are just point one or something like that, I'm not going to reach any points of E at all. Okay. So three is not an accumulation point. But what real number, what's an example of a real number which doesn't belong to E, but which is an accumulation point of E? Where can I stand on this number line which is not an element of E, but from which I can reach infinitely many points of E, no matter how short my arms are. Four. That's an example of an element of the real numbers. It's not an element of E, but it is an accumulation point of E. So that's one of the, the, the wrinkles in this definition, is that unlike a lot of other set theoretic topological definitions, um, we don't begin with the assumption that these points belong to the set. So 4, even though it's not an element of E, it is an accumulation point of E. What else is? 6. Yep. And I think we can convince ourselves that everything else in the real number line is not an accumulation point of E. We decided that 2 wasn't. Uh, for the same reasoning, we can also decide that 1 is not. Right? If I stand at 1, then there's a short distance that I can reach out where I don't reach infinitely many points of E. In fact, I don't reach any other points of E besides 1. Um, so if we... To finish this thought, what we can do is define the set of all accumulation points of E. We'll denote that by E prime. So according to the work that we just did, what is the set of all accumulation points of this E? It's the open interval from 4 to 6, but it also includes 4, and it includes 6. So one of the interesting things that happens when we think about sets of accumulation points is we started with this set E that had a couple of these weird points that actually we call isolated points that can be separated by a positive distance from the rest of the set, those points disappear when we think about the accumulation set. But another thing happened too. E had this component which was an open interval from 4 to 6. When we consider the accumulation set, that open interval became a closed interval. So it turns out, and this is a story that we'll continue in our second packet here, it turns out that taking the accumulation set of, of a set of points is a way of turning something which was open into something which is closed. So we can turn something which is open into something which is closed by taking and, and throwing in all of its accumulation points. And indeed, that's one of the ways in which we can define what a closed set even is. A closed set is one that contains all of its accumulation points.